Water carriers, folks. World rugby is clamping down on water carriers in rugby. There's a new trial law about this. We'll go over the details of this law, what the intentions are, and uh, what are the potential ramifications. You guys can let me know your thoughts. I'm wearing the Springboks jersey from the Lions Tour, and I've got that Lions jersey hanging because I would imagine uh, that this is directly related to incidents that happened in last year's British and Irish Lions Tour, but we'll get to that in a second. Speaking of British and Irish Lions jersey, if you want British and Irish Lions gear, not just the shirt, but all kinds of other stuff, um, they're still having sales on there, 70% off. Check the link in the description. They're an affiliate of the channel, the British and Irish Lions store. Spring sale is on. Happy days, man. Don't pay full price. Get yourself some rugby gear. That's what I like to do. So, um, yeah, what's the deal? World Rugby's trial law, the intentions of which are to improve the flow of matches, to reduce the unnecessary stoppages, to reduce the opportunity for interference. So like I said, they're talking about things like when you see the water carriers yelling at the, the referee or the linesman or assistant referees, um, you know, you've seen water carriers getting on the field and the ref has to order them off so they can resume play. Um, you've seen times, and there's loads of coaches that do this. Um, Russi Erasmus does it himself, but a lot of coaches use the water carriers as a means of kind of relaying instructions and whatnot to the uh, the players. This is nothing new, but World Rugby's decided they need to clamp down on this to clean things up a bit. And I do, I do understand it a bit. I mean, while order while water carriers are being ordered off the field, you and I are sitting around waiting for them to get off so play can resume. And I'm always a fan of speeding the game up. I do think the game is run a bit too slowly and. Um, I think uh, the less time we are having to wait around for them to resume play, and the more we can increase the ball in play time, that's going to be better for the game. Um, so what are the details of this? What are they, what are they saying? Well, uh, the only people who can carry water seemingly are medics, the two official designated water carriers, and the person who brings on the kicking tee. Medics can only give water to people they are treating for injuries. That's fair enough. And uh, the person who brings on the kicking tee can only give water to the goal kickers. Their roles are seemingly pretty simple enough. It's the two designated water carriers that are a little bit more, um, I don't know, a bit more controlled as to what they can do. They're only allowed to enter the field two times per half at a time agreed to by the officials. It has to be during a stoppage or like after a try kind of thing. Uh, yeah, like I said, they're only allowed on twice per half. So they can't just come on any time there is a stoppage. Um, they must remain in the technical area at all times, except for when they're allowed to come onto the field to provide that sweet, sweet H2O. And they're not allowed to, uh, they didn't say it as much, but they're not allowed to talk to the officials, basically. They're not allowed to yell out. They're not allowed to uh, approach or anything. They've got to keep their mouths shut. They're not allowed to get involved. Um, the only people who are allowed to kind of yell out at the officials are the medics and only for like alerting them to the presence of a medical necessity. So yeah, the water carriers need to be quiet. Players will be able to retrieve water from the dead ball area, just beyond the dead ball area at any time they want. So if the guys want the water, the water is available. They've just got to go get it. Now, None of that speaks directly to what we've seen from uh, from what Rassi was doing in the Lions tour. Because as I said, water carriers getting on the field, all the teams do this to one degree or another. But there's one stipulation on the water carriers that's about as direct as it can get. Because it says the water carriers may not be either the, the head coach or the director of rugby. So those are the two people who are banned from ever being the person to carry the water. Now, Rusty joked on Twitter that he's going to change his job title because director of rugby is a bit too formal. So he's going to become the director of coaching or something like that. I guess that's his kind of little jab to this being all a bit silly. Um, but yeah, that's essentially what they are proposing under this trial law. So overall... To be honest, I don't mind it because as I said, I'm all about getting the game sped up. 
But what I don't like is it, it does seem a little bit fake. That like, oh, well, the reason we're doing this is for the flow of the game. Bro, if that was true, there's a lot of other things you could be doing as well. You could be reducing the amount of time we take for goal kicks, because that takes ages. Teams genuinely take the full allotment of their goal kicking time. Like imagine, you know, any time the team um, that's been has a penalty on the bin, yellow carded, if they get a penalty shot, you better believe their kick is taken the whole time. You could reduce the amount of time we take for goal kicks. You could speed up or put some kind of clock on uh, for scrums because scrums getting set take an age. I know they have to do it safely, but you can't tell me they couldn't do it faster. Likewise, lineouts. Teams have these little powwows before every bloody lineout. There's loads of ways that you could be increasing the flow of the games. Even the TMO, like reduce what the TMO can get involved for. You know what I mean? All these things would, would uh, involve in... I think, more flow to the game, not just the water carriers. I would say, of all the things that are really, realistically going to speed up the game, I would suggest everything I've just suggested would speed up the game more than what the water carriers being kind of more restricted in their actions will do. But that's just my opinion. So, um, yeah, I do feel like it's a bit of a... It's a bit of a punishment, I guess, for Rassi. It's telling... It's a, it's a, I don't know, a, a thing. It's like, remember when Italy did that thing at the offside, um, the off, sneaky offside play at the, the breakdown when they wouldn't form a ruck and they would kind of hover around the, the, the back of the English players as they tried to get the ball out. Like that one game caused a reaction. I feel like this is a very similar situation. So, um, yeah, but I mean, that one was a bit more extreme because the Italians were literally the only ones doing it. Whereas water carriers... Rassi may be the only director of rugby running water, but every team uses water carriers to relay messages, as I said, to one degree or another. They all get messages to the players. So, yeah, we'll see how this um, speeds up the flow of the game or not. Or will coaches just find another way to... Um, another way to get involved i mean it seems like they're also clamping down a little bit on the medics and that the medics and the water carriers and the people bringing the king tea they can literally be penalized they can get their team penalized if they start shouting at the officials and stuff that was also in the details so yeah these guys are going to need to kind of zip it apparently but anyway i do think these are positive moves honestly i i, I do think speeding up the game and reducing all the on-field nonsense that goes on uh, is helpful but as i said i do think it's a little bit disingenuous and there's more that they could be doing if that was the uh, the genuine reason they want to do this anyway i've been rambling on too long you guys all take care of yourselves let me know what you think about the water carrying situation and um yes i will talk to you guys again soon see you later.